most of you know Norman, the A and R man for River Song, the Benson Company. Uh, he and Linda McLean and I went to uh, New York City uh, for the Grammy Awards this last year. And I guess how many Baptists we got in this audience here? Well, there's not too many Baptists. Uh, how many? What's the rest of you? Pentecostals? Uh, well, I'm Pentecostal myself. And uh, Baptists, and I don't argue with it. I don't argue about it. They believe in once saved, always saved. Eternal security. Amen. <laughs> well, I'd give anything in the world if I could be Baptist. I mean, uh, I just have offered people $10,000 just to <laughs> let me be Baptist because <laughs> I'm Pentecostal and uh, I know as of today I've been saved 89 times. <laughs> me and Norman was going to New York, me and Norman and, and Linda McLean was, uh, was going to uh, New York and we started up there and the weather was bad. And we, they notified us that it would be impossible to land in New York City. So we headed for Washington, D.C. and it was bad weather there. And we had to circle and circle and circle waiting to land. Finally got on the land and uh, I promised God I'd never get back on another plane. I begged and cried and pleaded. But I finally decided to get back on. I had to go, and we got on back on the plane and headed for New York when they said we could land. And bad weather was so bad between Washington and New York, on one fall, we dropped 500 feet in one clip. Even my polygrip didn't hold <laughs> We started the land, and, and you couldn't even see the runway. The only way I knew we was on the ground was when those wheels touched the concrete. And the reason I know that you can't be once saved, always saved, I got saved twice that day. We stayed in that. We stayed in the hotel. Norman Holland, uh, Norman, uh, picked out a hotel up there that was supposed to have been real reasonable. If you ever been to New York, hotel rooms are there is about 180, 200 dollars a day, and Norman found one for less than a hundred. But it was old hotel, the old fashioned hotel, and it was right down Times Square. I mean, we was right. 45th Avenue, right on Times Square. And I was up on the 17th floor, and uh, I woke up uh, next morning and headed going down to get me some coffee. And they had these elevators where they had operators on them, the handles where they push them over like this. And, and uh, this girl was operating this elevator. I stepped on, and she must have been pretty new because she throwed that thing in high gear. And uh, we went all the way to the bottom in about a minute and uh, hit the bottom with a thud, and I let out a groan. And uh, she turned around and said, what's the matter, mister? Did I stop too quick for you? I said, oh, no, that's all right. I always wear my britches down around my ankle. <laughs> but they had a fine coffee shop. They had a nice, those old hotels, that's one thing I dislike about the new hotels and motels. They don't have coffee shops like they used to. Uh, the old hotels had coffee shops, they'd open 24 hours a day. And some of the best places in the world eat. I walked on in and had the, the manager of the hotel was also the cashier for the coffee shop. So, uh, he collected the money, so he knew that I was a superstar, and he set me, <laughs> he set me down, and uh, 
I asked him, I said, what, what is a, a good thing to order? He said, well, we have the best steaks in New York. So I went in and I ordered me a steak and uh, had my salad first. And uh, she already had my iced tea out there. And, and I waited and waited and waited and was about to get discouraged. And finally, she, the waitress bought my steak out, but she had her thumb on my steak. And uh, I don't care. She's a pretty little thing. I don't care who it is. I don't want their cotton-picking thumb <laughs> on my steak. So I asked her, I said, what are you doing with your cotton-picking thumb on my steak? She said, I didn't want to drop it again. <laughs> when I started out, when I started to go up there and, and pay the bill, the manager of the hotel and the cash, he was also double duty. He said, well, Mr. Sumner, how'd you find your steak? I said, well, I just moved a tater chip. There it was. <laughs>